Well, it was a good day today. Uh, appreciate our fans coming out and supporting us. I thought that, uh, that we had over 200 lettermen uh, registered for the, uh, the uh, alumni flag football game, which is great to see those guys enjoying each other and, and, and great to have them back on campus. Tonight we've at 6 o'clock at the volleyball center, DJ Swearinger was having his celebrity basketball game. Uh, to benefit the Boys and Girls Clubs of the Midlands, which is a great cause, and appreciate his support, and to see all those guys back as well, the younger guys that are still playing the National Football League. So a good day today. I thought we culminated a really good spring uh, from a standpoint of accomplishments of, of what we felt like we needed. We've got a, a deeper team than we've had, uh, more competitive depth, especially on both lines of scrimmage, uh, which you know, at the end of the day, when you've got to come to practice every day and you've got to compete and strain uh, against a good player, all the time creates consistency in your performance, and that's what good programs have, and that's where we're headed. Uh, but I thought uh, we, we we accomplished some good things today. I wanted to originally was going to have the quarterbacks be live, but we did that the last two Saturdays, and uh, and today with our second offensive line, sometime on the edges, we were overmatched in our last Thursday practice. So I didn't feel like putting those guys under that much duress, uh, but I did extend some plays to let them make decisions down the field. Uh, and, and put those in, in the, those guys in situations. It's all about decision making, and that was a huge evaluation for us today, especially with those young quarterbacks. You see, Jay Yurick's playing multiple spots for us. Jay's a really good athlete. Uh, the guy's one of the faster guys on our football team. He competes. He plays hard. So he's going to play. He's still in the quarterback room, but he's going to play some receiver and, and special teams, as you saw him do that again today. But a guy that's a, a really good athlete is going to really help our team. AJ Turner's primary position next year will be running back. Uh, but he will play corner. Uh, he is a guy that is bright enough to be able to go and handle that and, and do that. He's proved that to us uh, th this spring. We've had him in multiple practices playing on both sides of the ball, and uh, I think he's done a really good job. But, you know, I told our football team it's, it's about leave no doubt right now. Leave no doubt about your commitment to our team and to having a good team. And then really, you know, in, in terms of doing the things you've got to do individually to improve yourself, which collectively helps our football team. And that's a uh, that's what we're looking forward to. And I, I think I thought today was great. I thought we had a really good spring and accomplished some really good things. And uh, we'll, as we move forward, we need to have a great summer. So I'll open it up for any questions. Raise your hand and get a microphone to you. Will, you mentioned Jay there. When did you guys first start looking at him as a receiver? And, or did he come to you guys and say, I think I could help there? Well, Jay helped us last year at the end of the season when we got Finn on special teams. Uh, he's a really good athlete. He's probably four or five, maybe sub four or five. He runs extremely well, understands our offense. Uh, it's hard to rep four guys at the quarterback position, and, 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 and we still, he's still repping at that position. He's staying in Dan's room as far as the, the meetings in, in, in are concerned. So, uh, but he's a guy that's going to help our team. He's an unselfish football player and a guy that we're excited about his future here at South Carolina. <clears throat> Did you see from Dakarian and Ryan today and any separation between those two guys? Well, I, again, we'd li I'd like to watch the tape first, but my biggest thing just sitting in my, from my standpoint was we didn't have any procedure issues. We didn't have any communication issues. Um, you know, we, we threw a good bit at them, brought up some corner pressure at times. They were right in their reads and the sight at times, and I think at the receiver position we were off at times, uh, not, not on the same page. When you're playing that many guys, sometimes it's hard to get into a rhythm, but I thought both guys just, uh, you know, managed our offense well. I thought uh, both of them showed some really good things. Josh? Do, do you have a backup quarterback or a leader for that spot right now? No, that'll go into fall camp, and we'll make a decision in fall camp uh, going into the season. It looked like, or, or Ryan threw the ball, at least in the first half, a lot more than DeCarian did. Was that the play calling, or was that what happened at the snap? No, that's – we wanted to throw the ball. I told BMAC, I don't, if we threw it every down, because to me it was all about the evaluation of those guys. That's critical for us moving forward. Uh, but I felt like, you know, again, you look in terms of, you know, attempts, I think DeCarian ended up with more attempts than Ryan did. So uh, it wasn't anything by design. Well. With, with this being your most visible showcase, at least for us to see, you said last year that it didn't really mirror the work that you did last year. How did this year's spring game mirror what you guys had accomplished this spring? Well, I, well, I don't really think you look at one day. You think you've got to look at 15 practices and you've got to look at the off-season program, the in-between days when we lift and we meet. And, um, and I just see, a, a, a you know, we have more good players in our program. Uh, we have more competitive depth. With that, that helps you every single day from a coach's standpoint of knowing guys got to come in the building every day and be motivated and go compete. And that's that's where we're continuing to move this thing forward. Uh, I like the eagerness of this team and the guys are working and in uh, the way they're they're getting after it. You know, but I don't think you it's re, it's reflection of one day. You know, it's hard to hard to put that in. Back to the room, Mike. 
And Will, going off from that, fans, even the media, we watch and we see what happens today. How much stock do you put in to today's spring game compared to what you've seen from these guys all spring going into fall camp? Well, it's hard to make judgments off one day. You, you got to look uh, look over a, a period of time. But again, I think we've accomplished a lot in 15 practices, especially young players. Today was a huge day. It's first time in the stadium. Uh, we did that purposely to understand it, especially when you come over here and play. Uh, now having our new long family operations facility, we're able to really function daily over there. Uh, but, but again, I think to see some of the young guys, Derek Boykins on the goal line for a freshman, that was a heck of a play uh, to go up right there and, and, and light it up in the A-gap. So that was, a, that was an impressive scene. And I saw some other things, but that jumps out at me. But I think for young players especially that haven't been in front of 80,000 people before, you'll see some, uh, s- some significant improvement from them in, in fall camp. Is Donnell okay? He went down. Yeah, he's fine. He's fine. And are there any other injuries that might keep somebody out during the summer in, no. into fall camp? No, I think uh, you know both uh, Chandler and, and Hank. If we had gone, if we had another week of spring, probably would be practicing. Uh, uh, nothing more than that. Jonathan Gibson had a cleanup of his uh, meniscus on his knee. That was from high school. Um, you know that that was really it. I mean, they've cleared uh, TJ and Javon as far as running and those things are concerned. So we're we're in good shape. Uh, you played the uh, young running backs a lot today, Harris and uh, Fenwick. How, how did you think they looked, particularly Harris, who looked like he had some good runs? Well, again, he runs behind his pads. There's nothing soft to hit. Uh, he, he, he runs through contact well. Wish he had gotten that in on the goal line. Derek, Derek Boykins made a nice play on him. So uh, we'll continue to, to you know, find the best guy that's going to go out and give us an opportunity to got to create some, some uh, runs as far as making a guy miss and running through contact. And that's, that's something we, we haven't done consistently well in our three years. And we we got to continue to, to, to search for that. Coach, just talk about the defensive line. Uh, fans in particular, I'm sure, are going to want to know about Pickens. But, but any of them, really, what stood out to you? Well, the, the, he, the most gratifying thing to me is to see big bodies that are good athletes running in and out in a bunch of them. And at the end of the day, we haven't had that. We haven't had the much depth and, com- and, and quality depth that we have now. But I think all those guys, are, especially the young guys, you take Zach and, and Rodriguez Fenton on the edge and uh, Joe Anderson on the edge, uh, are going to be really good players for us. And uh, the, the game starts to continue to slow down. You could see that as spring went on. Each practice, they started improving more and more and more. Uh, Ricky Sandage had a really good spring. J.J. Ambari had a fantastic spring. Uh, it's two guys that, you know, as true freshmen, probably should have been red shirted and put in the weight room and lifted and and uh, hardened up you know for their for their red shirt freshman year but they played and we and now we're going to benefit from from going through that and both of those guys had really good springs but Kobe Smith I mean we've had some guys step up Dennis Wanham getting him back healthy is huge for us Brad Johnson had a really good spring he's playing his best football so we feel good about you know the the uh, the depth we have and the quality depth we have up front defensively uh, did Jamel Cook show you anything today, and, and how has his spring kind of gone? Well, he's been inconsistent as far as, you know, just assignment-wise and effort, to be honest with you, and, and it's something that he certainly can improve on. Um, you know, he flashed today on some plays, obviously the interception on the go on to carry, and I told him to just put your foot in the ground and go score a touchdown in that situation. It goes back to the decision-making. Uh, but, but a guy that, you know, Jamel has showed up at some times, has had some nice hits out of the middle of the field, has done some decent things on special teams. Surprise, Parker White at halftime. What was that moment like for you? And can you talk about sort of the decision leading up to that? Right. Well, it was an easy decision. He's won two games for us going out there to kick the final kick of the game. And uh, a guy that's really, you know, went through a very, you know, up and down first year uh, and fought through that and really needed to clean up some things mechanically, which he did in the offseason. And he had a fantastic year for us last year. Uh, and I and just, did, just did a really nice job for us. So, uh, you know, I was a walk-on. I, I never forget the day that I was re- awarded a scholarship walking off the practice field there at Sanford Stadium when Coach Goff told me I was on scholarship. And anytime you're able to reward, you know, a walk-on that's come in and, and earned his opportunities and earned the scholarship. And this young man earned his scholarship. We didn't even name him the starting kicker two years ago. And he continued to fight. He continued to, to battle. He con- continued to work on his craft. And, and has uh, just been a, a really good, you know, dependable guy for us. He didn't start out real well in the first half. He's one of three. I told him at halftime. About pulled the scholarship. I'm, ki- I'm kidding. Anything else for Coach? And on that line, Will, when you give scholarships to guys like that, is it normally a seniority thing, how you do it? Like, I think uh, Asbury, Charleston, uh, 
Farrell ended up getting those. How do you kind of do the do the list? Production. At the end of the day, it's about guys that produce, about guys that, uh, you know, Hayden Hurst got one after the, after spring. I realized that he was going to be a pretty good player for us. So it's all about production. It's all about, you know, how much are they producing within our organization. Uh, it's you know, That's what it all comes down to. And Parker's been a very productive player for us. Uh, let's go.